Hello everybody. If you're a Battletech fan, you likely already knew that the Battletech Essentials box was on its way. This Target exclusive version of the beginner box is now out and I wanted to jump on it quickly so that you know what it has to offer. Plus, it gave me the excuse to devote a Saturday to painting up mechs rather than mowing the lawn. See, everybody wins. So while I do some painting, let's talk about the box. If you already have a beginner box, you're going to be familiar with the contents of Essentials with a few notable changes. The most obvious are the included battle mechs. The Yen Lo Wang Centurion is an iconic battle mech that has had many famous pilots over the years, including the most recent Danai Liao Centrella, who gets to use it in great effect in the new novel Blood Will Tell by Jason Schmetzer. The included record sheet for starter play is the 9A variant with the AC-10, LRM-10, and two medium lasers. The other battle mech is a little lesser known, but still a great pick for Battletech fans. The rifleman, known as Legend Killer, was piloted by Gray Noten, one of, if not the most famous, Solaris 7 champion. After going undefeated in his machine for seven years, he retired unbeaten in 3022. The included record sheet for the rifleman is the 3N variant with two large lasers, two AC-5s, and two medium lasers. In addition to the two plastic mechs, there is a thick cardboard standee with four battle mechs, a Rifleman, Centurion, Thunderbolt, and Wolverine. All four are great mechs for new players to get their feet under them. The included record sheets for the Thunderbolt and Wolverine are the 5S and 6R. Nothing too unexpected here. Included in the box are the pilot cards for each mech, Gray Noten, Justin Chiang Allard, Anya Terrell, and Chaka Mubutu. The quick start rules are the same as in the beginner box with everything you need to get started. It's worth noting that these rules and record sheets do not include heat management, so that rifleman is going to be a monster to fight. Normally the 3N is a hot box that requires a lot of heat management and tough choices about what to shoot. In this box, just go wild. The Essentials box includes a standard introduction to the Battletech universe, one paper map that has a forest on one side and an arena setting on the other and the Solaris 7 arena map rules. For those who might not know, Solaris 7 is a planet most well known for being a location for grand gladiatorial games between mech warriors. These are recorded and consumed through holovids across the inner sphere and even into the periphery. The special rule for a Solaris arena side of the paper map includes walls in the arena that rise and fall during play based upon dice rolls at the beginning of turns. The walls block line of sight, cannot be jumped over or landed on, and is a pretty neat idea to mix things up. The opposite side of the map is a much more natural forested terrain, though it has a special rule for patches of hard-packed gravel. In addition to the map rules, there are also rules for various stables or teams of gladiators. For example, the Silver Dragon stables are affiliated with the Draconis Combine and are known for maximizing their use of terrain for cover. All shots suffer a plus one to hit modifier if a Silver Dragon mech is standing in a wood hex. These special rules are a great way to tease new players with the a la carte nature of much more advanced Battletech rules. I think it's a great idea to include them in this release. A short story by Michael Stackpole titled Spanner in the Works is a good introduction to some of the excitement and intrigue of the world of Solaris 7. You know a good short story when you finish it and feel a little disappointed that it isn't a full novel. I want to know how things work out for Dell. As far as painting goes, the models being slightly torso twisted works out to the painter's advantage especially if you elect to try and freehand that red sun on the Yen Lo Wang. There are only a few places where things need to be mostly straight. The rest you can fake it and think it still turns out. I'll let you be the judge. One thing I would do differently on mine is I just do a straight up white overspray. I know the video shows it kind of pink. I had it in my head that the mech was going to need a slightly red tint to it and it really didn't work out. It may be noticeable in the photos and it will definitely just slowly drive me insane. Do you think I did the mechs justice? Let me know in the comments below. If you're just getting into Battletech and are able to get to a Target store, the Essentials box is a great substitute for the beginner box. I know it's frustrating for those who are outside the US, but what I would hope will happen in the future for Catalyst is to release the models in a slightly different pose as part of a Solaris 7 Lance. Maybe they could even give the Yen Lo Wang its shield that Denai has on it. If you're still on the fence, the box also includes a 20% off coupon that is accidentally labeled as $20 off. Oops. That could be a good thing if you plan on making a big catalyst order in the future and push past that $100 mark. Ah, math is fun. If you are going to make such an order anyway, the Essentials box could end up being quite the deal. 
The little birds have been chirping, and I suspect the essential box is going to do pretty darn well. That means new players for Battletech, and overall, that's a good thing for fans who want new Battletech content in the future. If you enjoyed this review and paint along, hit the like and subscribe button to let YouTube know it's worth sharing with others who don't yet know about the Mech Frog nonsense train. If you're in a good place to do so, the channel memberships are a great way to go that extra step to directly support this and future content. I generally post three times a week, original Battletech fiction, lore videos, and the occasional review like this. Until we meet again, take care and go make the world a slightly better place today and tomorrow.